So now let's look at a couple of examples where we determine the most number of seats a party could achieve based on the numbers. And we're going to look at both parties and see how that would affect, um, how the numbers would affect each party, uh, whether the Democrats were gerrymandering or the Republicans were gerrymandering. So example one, a state with 4 million people in 10 districts, party affiliations from the state are 70% Republican, 30% Democrat. So we're making it a little more interesting now. It's not 50-50. First off, how many people are in the district? Well, this state has 4 million people and 10 districts. Remember, you have to have the same number of people in every district. So we take those 4 million and we divide by 10. So we divide it evenly. So that comes out to be 400,000 people in every district. Now, how many votes would it take to win one of those districts? Remember, to win, you need a majority. And a majority is going to be half. Half of 40,000 is sorry, 400,000 is 200,000. So I just divide by two, 200,000, but I need more than that. So at a minimum, I would need 200,000 and one votes or more. But generally we think about what is the minimum I need. I need at least 200,000 and one votes to win a district. All right, now let's say district maps are drawn such the states won by the parties are proportional to party affiliation in the states. How many seats would each party get? Well, we have 10 districts, and those 10 districts are being, um, we can think about it going proportional to the party affiliations. Well, Republicans, there's 70% of the state is Republican. If we take um, those 10 districts and multiply it by 70%, and notice I am converting 70% to a decimal. Anytime you calculate with percents, you make it into a decimal. 70% as a decimal times 10 is seven. So seven seats go to the Republicans. And then do the same thing for Democrats. 30% times 10 is three seats going to the Dems. And a quick check, seven plus three is 10. Remember we wanted 10 districts. So that would be, if the, um, the seats, uh, you might say no gerrymandering, the seats were just going um, kind of proportional to how people were voting along their party lines in the state. Now, the whole point um, of this, and this should have been part C, I'm realizing, there was a typo here in the, in the handout, and then this should be part D. The, um, if the Democrats are drawing the maps to their benefit, how could they achieve more than three seats. In fact, how many more could they get? So let's see, let's see what they could do with the numbers. Um, so let's think about the numbers. To do that, first, we need to know how many Democratic votes we have in the state. So first, the total Dem votes. That's what we want to look at. To do that, we want to take a look at the total number of people in the state times the percentage that are Democrat. So 30% of the state is a Democrat, and there are 4 million votes altogether, or 4 million people. Remember, we're assuming that everybody votes for simplicity's sake. 30% times 4 million is 1,200,000. So with these assumptions, we have 1,200,000 uh, Democratic votes to work with. So those are the votes we have to work with to try to achieve our wins. Then the second is we want to say how many wins could we get? Um, and a win is a majority. So we're really asking ourselves um, how many majorities would this number of votes get us? To figure out how many majorities we could get with that, that number of votes, we would want to think about taking that number of votes and dividing by what it takes to get a majority. So how many majorities would this number of votes allow? So take that number of votes, 1,200,000 Dems, and we're gonna divide by what it takes to get a majority. Remember the majority is up here, the minimum is 200,001. So I'm gonna divide by the minimum to get a majority of 200,001. So this is a minimum that it would, would be required. When we do this, we get a decimal. And I'm gonna write this decimal out, 5.999. And, and it keeps going with the nines, but what I want to really emphasize here is that you do want to write out the decimal. Don't round it right now because there is something specific that's happening with this calculation. We're dividing by a minimum. When you divide by a minimum, 
what you achieve as an answer is a maximum number. So we can at most get 5.99. Because that's the most we could get, that means we can't actually get to six seats. We don't have enough people to get six majorities. We only have enough people to get 5.99 or remember whole majorities, we could get up to five majorities. So that means the Democrats could win five seats. So five seats, up to five seats, no more than five because we don't have enough votes to get to six, five seats could be won by the Democrats. At least that's the most that could be win, won. Um, they might win less, of course, but that is the most they could win. This is what they would, would maybe try to strive for is to win five seats. Now that's better than what they had, right? Um, if this were by, by party um, were proportional to party affiliations, the Democrats would only get three and they could with gerrymandering get up to five. So that's better than three. So they do are able to achieve a little bit more potentially if they gerrymander. Um, let's look at what the Republicans could do. Um, to figure out what Republicans do, we want to basically do the same process. First, figure out the total number of Republican votes. And we do it the same way, except um, the state is 70% Republican, so we're going to take 70% times 4 million. And that would be 2,800,000 Republican voters or votes. Then we take that 2,800,000 and we divide it by what it takes to win. The minimum it would take to win would be that uh, majority number of 200,001. So this is the minimum to win. When we divide by a minimum, we get a maximum. So the maximum number of, of seats we could get would be 13.99 and again the nines go on. Once again, we have to kind of think about what this means. That is the maximum we could get. Um, so we can't go to 14. And in fact, if you think beyond that, remember, there are only 10 districts in the state. So what this number is saying is I could, if I had even more districts, I could get up to 13. But remember, there's only 10 districts. So what this is saying when we get a calculation of 13.99 is we have more than enough to get all a uh, all 10. So we could get all 10 if we're the Republicans. All 10 seats could be given to the Republicans in terms of the numbers. And if all 10 seats go to the Republicans, then there would be none left for the Democrats. So basically, um, the Republicans, if things were proportional, could get seven seats. But if they gerrymander, they could get up to 10. In other words, they could get up, up, to, up to all of them. Let's look at one more example of this. A state with 6 million people in 12 districts, party affiliations from the state are 40% Republican, 60% Democrat. How many people are in each district and how many votes would it take to win a district? Well, there's 6 million people altogether in the state. There are 12 districts. So that would be 500 people, 500,000 people per district. How many votes would it take to win a district? Well, you'd want a majority of those um, 500,000 votes. So majority is just over half. So half would be 250,000 and then 250,000 won. I need one more vote. So at a minimum, I would need 250,000 and one votes, or of course I could get more. So I could actually have more than that, but I need at least 250,000 and one. If district maps were drawn such that the seats won by the parties were proportional to party affiliation in the state, how many seats would each party get? Well, remember we have 12 districts. And if we want to split those proportionally, we would be looking at 40% uh, of them going to the Republicans. 40% of 12 would be 4.8. And that would round up to 5. Five seats would go potentially to Republicans. Now you might ask me, well, why are we rounding this one up? Whereas before with some of those other problems, we, we rounded down. 
we didn't allow ourselves to go fully up. Well, here, we're not talking about dividing by a minimum. Remember, the reason we couldn't include the decimal in the previous problems was because we were working with dividing by a minimum, so a minimum uh, in terms of the majority. Here, we're just literally looking at 40% of 12. And when we do that, we would just, when we get a decimal, we just need to kind of round off to what's closest. So it makes sense to round off here because we're not multiplying or dividing by a minimum or a maximum. We're just trying to get closest to what 40% of the seats would be. Um, we could do the same thing with the Democrats by looking at 60% of 12, which would be 7.2 which would round to seven seats for the Democrats. So if, if all of this um, in terms of the uh, seats were split proportional to party affiliation, you would have about five of the seats going to Republicans, about seven of the seats going to Democrats for a total of 12 seats. Now let's say Democrats were drawing the maps to their benefit. What is the most number of seats they could win if voters along, always vote along party lines? So this time the Democrats are gerrymandering. Um, once again, I should have had a C and a D. Something went off with my, my numbering in PowerPoint. So this is part C. If the Democrats are drawing the maps to their benefits, um, that what we need to think about is how many Democratic votes we have. So the first step is to think how many Democratic votes do we have? Well, 60% of the state is Democratic and there are 6 million people. So I can work out how many Democratic votes there are by taking 60 percent times six million to get three million six hundred thousand democratic votes to work with the democrats need to know how many votes they they have to work with because that will allow them to figure out how many majorities how many districts they win in terms of the majority so they take those number of votes 3,600,000, and they divide by what it takes to win a district, by what it takes to get a majority, which at minimum is 250,001. So when I divide this, I will end up getting the maximum number of seats that would be possible to get, maximum number of wins. That would be 14.399. Now that's the maximum number of wins that the Democrats could achieve. And if that's the maximum, that's saying they could get up to 14, but wait a second, there's only 12 districts. So because our number is over 12, that's saying they have plenty of votes to actually achieve um, winning all 12 districts. So the Democrats could get up to all, could get all 12. If they do get all 12, then the Republicans would get no seats. So when you get a number that's over the number of districts, what that means is there's plenty of votes to achieve all the seats. If we wanted to do this for Republicans gerrymandering in Part D, we want to think about how many Republican votes there are. So 40% times 6 million. That would be 2,400,000 Republican votes. And then we just like we did with the Democrats, we're going to divide that by what it takes to win. So 2,400,000 Republican votes divided by what it takes to win a district. So 250,000 and one. So the minimum number of votes it takes to win a district. When we divide by a minimum, we're gonna get the maximum number of wins we could achieve. When we do this calculation, we'll get 9.59, etc. cetera. Um, remember, this is a maximum we can't go above that number. So at most, I could get nine. Uh, so the Republicans could get nine seats. That's the most they could get. They don't have enough votes to get a 10th seat. They just, but they have enough votes that they could get nine seats. And if they get nine seats, then the Democrats would get um, uh, three because there's 12 districts. So you can work with the numbers to see what would be possible with either party gerrymandering.